everyone. Welcome to the Experiment Nation Conference. Hi, I'm Aditi Gupta. And today I'm going to talk about the path to product growth. I will be sharing some tips and tricks and my personal playbook of how to build a successful growth roadmap, which counts and actually gets implemented. So let's get started. A bit about me. I have spent the first half of my career in marketing and digital marketing and the second in product growth and retention. My career spans three countries. I started my career in India, in Mumbai. Then I worked in Dubai for a few years. Currently, I am based out of Toronto. A few fun facts about me. I'm also an amateur calligrapher, something I picked up during quarantine. I'm a vegan. So in case if you're looking for some vegan recipes, please hit me up. Today's session will be broken down into four sections. The first is about understanding the business problem. Then we will move on to building a hypothesis. From there, I will share some tips and tricks of building alignment and buy-in. Lastly, I will leave you with some growth roadmap building techniques as well as templates. Before we get into the session, I'd like to spend some time on what is the role of product growth. I see the role of product growth during two stages of product life cycle. The first is pre-product. This is the stage when the product is, is, is still in the pre-launch phase or at the MVP stage. But in this stage by experimentation, user interviews, user research, you can help validate or invalidate the MVP or the product hypothesis. By this, you can help de-risk the overall product roadmap. The real value of product growth comes in the post-product phase. This is, this is the stage where you can support the product team by analyzing the user behavior, optimizing the experience, and eventually supporting the growth of user base. One of the most important aspects of product growth management is understanding the business problem. Every business has a different growth problem based on the industry, type of customer, and the product life cycle. Hence, the first thing that you should do is understand the product you support, the team you support, what are the business goals for the product, for the quarter, for the year, and what is the overall business objective. Then talk to your stakeholders. Book a meeting with each and every stakeholders and listen to them. Also, in these meetings, get a pulse check on expectations. This will help you downstream later on in building alignment. And this is one of the most important thing, which is over, often overlooked, is read, read, read. Read as much material you have on product documentation, customer reviews, support tickets, and any past customer interviews. Once you have an understanding of your business problem, then let's talk about building and validating your growth hypothesis. There are a lot of ways you can do this. I will be sharing some practical tips which I have used it in the past and which have worked. Firstly, look at your user analytics. Identify themes from user interviews. Also, put yourself in the shoes of the customer and experience the product for yourself. Once you start seeing regular themes occurring from different streams of feedback that you're getting from customers, from stakeholders, as well as from A-B testing and experimentation, then you know that your hypothesis is validated. I want to share a pro tip here. Product analytics is the best friend of product growth. If you don't have an analytics tool, then the first thing that you should do is build a business case for it. Because otherwise, without product analytics, you will be running blind and all the hypotheses that you've made, it would be very difficult to validate them with actual data. Now, let's move on to the most important aspect of building alignment and buy-in. This is a very crucial step as often growth roadmaps are not prioritized or not, or not implemented because there is lack of buy-in. In order to build buy-in, first build a draft of your roadmap 
and the list of experiments that you want to run based on the light testing that you have done previously, as well as all the research you have gathered from users as well as stakeholder interviews. Then share your roadmap with stakeholders as well as design and dev colleagues and get feedback on timelines and resources. After making edits from all the feedback that you've received from your stakeholders, finalize your roadmap and then share it with the broader company. Lastly, communicate. This is often an overlooked aspect of a growth team. Send weekly or bi-weekly updates on progress, delays. This could be either done on email, on weekly or bi-weekly status calls, or as well as on a Slack channel. I'd like to share a pro tip here, publish results and wins in company-wide newsletters, experimental Slack channels, as well as company-wide product demos. This will really help build the credibility of the growth team. Let's talk about building a growth roadmap. The most important aspect of a growth roadmap is prioritization. Based on all the feedback research you have done, segment your roadmap items into quick wins. These are low effort in terms of resourcing and time and deliver a high impact. Then comes testing of MVPs, low fidelity prototypes, which could be low to medium effort, but high impact. Prioritization of such initiatives will help build the credibility of your growth team and slowly you can ask for more resourcing and investment for your medium to long-term initiatives. I will leave you with examples of growth roadmap formats which have, I have used in the past and which have worked. These, all of these could be downloaded for free from Department of Products website. With that, that's a wrap from my side. I hope you enjoyed my session. If you have any feedback, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. Thank you.